Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. We're super excited today. We're launching our our hub, our evangelistic hub and distribution center. It's tonight at 530. Weather has been crazy. We haven't known what to expect. And it's 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 been a, a little crazy out here. But you know what? God is making a way. He continues to make a way. I truly believe those who who can make it will make it. And we're gonna have an amazing time. I wanted I wanted to share this this scripture. You know, one of the things I had a leader once tell me early on is that where you are in 10 years is not where you are now. And a lot of times when we write our story, we're in a different place. But I want to tell you, I want to encourage you today to stay focused. Because the key is to remain focused. The key is to listen to God. And when we hear from God, the we have to stay established. We have to stay focused because there's so many distractions. There's so many things that come to take us off track. And when we start every place we go, we're, 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 we're getting into things when we're not, that have nothing to do with, with God's plan. That has nothing to do with our giftings. And we're trying to do things. We lose focus. And before you know it, it's been 10 years and you haven't established yourself. You haven't done anything. You haven't been able to produce anything. Why? Because you've been planting in all different places. You've been doing things all over the place. I love this in 1 Chronicles 12.33. It says of Zebulun, 50,000 experienced troops. They fitted out with all kinds of weapons and instruments of war that could order and set the battle in array. Men not of double purpose, but stable and trustworthy. They were stable. So right here, the writer describes how these brave men, they helped David wage war. They were brave. They were brave. They weren't double-minded. They weren't double-hearted. They were focused. They were stable. And they were trustworthy. They stuck with one purpose. Come on, many of the things I can say now that haven't been established in my life, it's because I've lost focus. Because I've put my focus in something else or maybe something else. I, I and, and it's okay. It's okay to admit. At, mainly as leaders, we have to be able to admit when we mess up. We we'll be able to say, you know what? I lost focus. Or I got out of line. Or I, I got off of track. But you know what? I, God showed me and I got back. We have to know what, I mean, there's nothing can separate you from the love of God and from your purpose that God has for you. So God taught others in the Bible to be single-minded in purpose. When God called Abraham, he told him to leave the past behind and to focus on the place that God would show him. And that was in Genesis 12, 1. Being single-hearted was what Paul spoke of when he said to let go of what lies behind and press on to what lies ahead. Don't be ashamed. Don't, don't keep on beating yourself up of what you could have done or should have done or how it could have been better or the mistakes that you wish you didn't make. Don't, don't keep doing that. It says leave behind, leaving behind those things, Paul says, and press on to what lies ahead. Get back on track. Get back on that narrow road. Oh, you messed up or, or things happened to you. And, and it, don't make excuses. Just get back on. Being single in purpose was what the Lord was encouraging Israel to do through the prophet Isaiah, right? He said, do not earnestly remember the former things, neither consider the things of old, but behold, I am doing a new thing. That's in Isaiah 43, 18. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. But how can you see the new thing? How could you step into what God has for you this year, this season, this time when you're still looking back? Whether you're rehearsing the glories of the old days or whether you're rehearsing the, re the, the things that you're ashamed of and that you regret from the old days. Don't look at any of it. You don't even have to celebrate all the victories from before. Oh, I remember in 2018, we had a revival in our church. I hear people all the time. What's happening now? What are we doing now? What's happening in your church today? What's happening in your family today? What's happening in your marriage today? I don't want to rehearse old things. I want to behold 
what God is doing today. Our problem is that we always want to hold on to the past. Come on, I'm guilty. And still go into the future. So I have to constantly work it out. Wait, wait, wait. Why am I even thinking about that? That doesn't even matter anymore. That's not where I'm at today. Why am I rehearsing things in my mind? The enemy always wants to keep you thinking about the past. Thinking about what happened. Thinking about what's going on. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And before you know it, the problem seems this big. And yet it's this tiny. But because the enemy has allowed us to rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it. Some of the people that you're worried about don't even care about you. They're moving on with their life. They don't care. And, and we'll sit here and we will deplete ourselves of what God has for us. All because we focus on things that don't matter. Because if it did matter, people will be in your life. If it did matter... Things will still be in your, your, your life. I've learned not to, to let it go. Let it go. And when I rehearse and I see, wow, I wasted a whole lot of time there. Ho trying to hold on to something that God was trying to get me to let go of. But here I was fighting and fighting and fighting. So we have to understand. Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise and be against the other. So where is our devotion? Where, are, where is our trustworthiness? Where is our integrity? Find that place where God has established you. Find that place where you need to be. And be loyal there. And this is, this is about what God is speaking to you. Not what man is speaking to you. What is God showing you? What did God show Abraham? What did God show David? In turn, these men that were with him and following him, what happened? They realized that there was a devoted, there was something, there was a mission, there was a vision. And because of that, they, it says that they were ready for battle. They were men not of double purpose, but stable. They were stable. Not double mind. Oh, I thought I heard God, but maybe I missed God. I'm not sure. No, be sure. Before you step out to something, be sure. And once you know that, you know. I'm telling you, there's a fear of influence in what God has for you. There's a fear of influence in what the Lord wants to do in your life. We need to avoid having a double heart and a dual purpose in life. Instead, we should be decisive people, mainly leaders. Leaders especially should be able to make decisions and stick to them. Stick to them. And oh, well, God changed my mind. Oh, God. If God speaks to you and God shows you something, he's going to finish what he started. He's going to finish it. God is, is not a man that he should lie. God is not double-minded. So if we can say, if we can use that, which is used so freely nowadays, that God told me. If God tells us to do something, it doesn't matter if all hell breaks loose around you. You keep doing what God called you to do. You stay stable. You stay in the fight, in the battle. Guess what? Oh, you know, we, we have this. Nowadays, if things ain't working out and all the provision and everything's there, then it's not the Lord. I, have you read your Bible? Have you read what some of these men of God have went through? Abraham left, didn't know where he was going. And the Bible says there was a famine. People began to die around him. I mean, this is real. But God spoke to Abraham and he kept going. He kept being obedient to what the Lord had called him to do. Leaders especially, let's be stable. If we make decisions and then continue to go back and forth in our minds and question and be unstable, we, we got to stop and go back and hear from God. Because when we hear from God and we make a decision based on what God has told us to do, it doesn't matter if you end up with one, with two, or with 4,000. God said it. He will fulfill his purpose. Once we have decided to do something, we need to do it with all of our heart and stay committed to it. We need to be focused and single hearted with respect to God's gift and calling. In Romans 12, the apostle Paul talks about the different gifts of grace. He talks about this that have been given to individual members in the body. He says that if you're a teacher, you should give yourself to teaching. 
Come on. If you're a teacher, give yourself to teaching. You don't got to go meddling in prophecy. You don't got to go meddling in trying to be the pastor of the church. If you are a teacher, devote yourself to teaching. Why? Because God has gifted you there. And because he's gifted you there, now he's going to give you, he's going to give you grace there. He's going to give you influence there. He's going to give you everything you need to be a, the teacher that he has gifted you to be. This is so powerful. If you are an exhorter, you should give yourself to exhortation. Prophesy. Speak life into people. Exhort them. Lift them up. Encourage them. Be who God calls you to be. Paul says not to get overly involved in things God has not gifted you for and called you to do. You see, we live in a time where we think we have to know everything. We have to be good at everything. It's okay to say, you know what? That's definitely not my lane. I'm not really good there. You see, I'm not the greatest teacher. And that's why I have teachers around me. And that's why I'm not ashamed when I read something to call. My son has an amazing teaching anointing. I have amazing teachers in my life that, man, I started out meeting. I, I would meet my teacher in Starbucks every week because I was writing things to teach. I was, I was an internship and I had to teach, but I didn't know what I was doing. So I would sit with a teacher and have him help me. I, I, I'm feeling this. I read this and he will help me. Get yourself around people who are gifted. It's okay to say, you know what? That's not my best ability, but I'm going to learn. And I'm going to be with people who that's their best ability. And I'll learn from them. It's, it's so important. Resist the temptation to get entangled and to do everything. Come on. You don't have to be in control of everything. Let it go. Let it go. You don't have to be in control of everything. Resist that temptation and accomplish. Then you will accomplish your goals. You're going to accomplish your goals because what God gave you, what God has given you and given you the gift, he's already given you everything you need to fulfill it. You don't have to do anything. It's the thing is that you're not focused. That thing is that we get off track. We start doing things we're not supposed to be doing. So do not be double-minded. If you believe you're supposed to be in a specific place in your life, then be consistent. Be consistent. Stay on track. Remain focused and stable. Always pressing towards your goal and the power of the Holy Spirit. One thing I've learned, I've been saved now for 15 years. I've been seeking the Lord. I've been learning. And I'm nowhere near the woman I was when I got saved. And I'm nowhere near the woman I want to be. Because I know God is perfecting me each day. But one thing I could tell you is that 70% of the things I've done in my life have been things I don't want to do. But I've been faithful in them. And, and every time I'm faithful in the many things that I don't want to do. I don't, wanna, I don't always want to get up every day. And read my devotion and write in my journal. I, I'm being honest with you. Some days I just don't want to. I don't want to get up every day and, and, and clean and, and do all my house duties. Some days I don't want to do that. But you know, I have to be faithful. I have to be committed to the things that God has placed in my hand. I have to be committed to clean my house to do my dishes, to do my laundry. These are commitments. It's not what I want to do. But you see, those commitments have allowed the other 30% of the things I do want come to pass. Because I was faithful in the little apartment that was falling apart. Because you were faithful in that beat up car. Because you were faithful with those things and you, you didn't complain. You just were faithful. It allowed you to one day have what you want. So I want to encourage you. Stay focused. There's power in staying focused. And being committed. Don't complain. Do what God has put before you. And there's gifts and talents you have. And I'm telling you. If you stay committed. To what God wants to do in your life. And you keep on. Even when it's what you don't want to do. Come on. I don't want to. I'll be honest with you. Full. I'm, 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 you know me. You get the truth. I don't want to live in Western New York. I remember the one prayer I prayed to the Lord. I prayed this when I left Dunkirk and I, was, I went to California. I remember praying this prayer and I said, God, you could send me all over the world. 
My dream was to go to Africa. I've been to Africa. My dream was I want to I wanna travel the nation, but don't ever send me back to that area. And guess where? After finishing internship, after being ordained, where I got sent to go? Back to Western New York. And here I am. But you see, now I've realized that God has given me a new eyes. He's given me a new vision. I'm, now I could pray, Lord, what is your assignment? Whatever that is, I want to fulfill it. Do I like shoveling snow? Do I like driving in the snow? Do I like wearing earmuffs and all of this stuff? No. My daughter is telling me how beautiful the weather is in her house. But you know what? We have to be committed. People that are selfless. People that are willing to follow God. So I want to encourage you today. There's power in focus. Stay focused on what God has called you to do. Not what you want, but what God has called you to do. And I'm telling you, ultimately, you'll see the fruit of what you want in your life. It'll come to pass. God has healed my children. God has healed my marriage. I, I, that hasn't happened by me focusing on them. That's happened by me focusing on the kingdom. The more I focus on the kingdom the more I see, and it's like, wow, this really changed. And it's because our eyes have to stay established on the Lord. I pray this devotion, it, it encourages you today because I'm telling you, we have to encourage each other in this hour to keep pushing each other. We all make mistakes. We all sometimes fall short. But guess what? Together we can get back up. We could hold each other's hands and we could arrive. I'm excited. If you're coming out tonight, I pray that everyone gets here safely. Tonight, we are opening up our evangelistic hub, our distribution center. It's a dream that became reality. It was what I one day dreamed of, but didn't think it would ever come to pass. And today, we're opening it up. We're excited to be able to bless Western New York with food and, and be able to, to just see what the Lord does through this place and, and, and raise up leaders. Come on, raise up people who can win their communities. And together, we can work together and we could change the world. We could actually change the world. I love you, my friends. Be blessed. Everyone's invited. Oh my gosh, we got so much roast beef coming and bread. So much food has been donated to us and we're so excited. Um, just meats and cheeses and desserts. My daughter-in-law has been baking away and she's opened up a new baking. I, her baking is amazing. So we're just excited, not only for what God's going to do, but be able to eat together, um, enjoy time, fellowship together with, with all the people that we are, that we just love dearly that are coming out. And we have people driving three hours away who have Call me this morning and so say we will be there. So I'm just blessed to what God is doing in our region. I love you, my friends. Pray for us. Pray for Outpour Ministries. Pray for what God is going to do through Inspired Journey and Outpour Ministries. And that we can continue to do the work of the ministry. Because that's the heart. That's the heart to just do what God has called us to do. So just partner with us. Whatever way, I'm going to try to be live tonight. I know a lot of people want to come and can't come. I, I have people who, who were going to travel here. And their flights have gotten canceled. So we're just going to celebrate together. I'm hoping to get live. If you want to partner with us, outpourministries.org, go ahead. You could donate. You could become a sponsor. You could also sign up so we could send you monthly reports of what we're doing, where we are, who we're helping, and what God is doing more than anything. It's all the Lord. I love you, my friends. Be blessed. I'll see you tonight if you're coming. If not, let's stay connected on our devotions. I love you, friends. Have a wonderful day.